Venus has been a world variously envisioned over time to be an abode of life. A century ago, wishful thinking imagined a jungle world hidden under a thick cloud deck full of endless forests and fern-like plants and tall trees. Then we took a closer look through a series of probes sent by the United States and the Soviet Union, even glimpsing the surface of that world. Needless to say, there was no jungle. In fact, it seemed a world that presented the very worst, even impossible conditions for anything to survive. For a time, life on Venus seemed off the table, and to an extent, not much attention was paid to our hellish neighbor in the search for life. But then we began to learn more about Venus as we further scratched the surface. For example, it's now thought that Venus was not always like it is today. In fact, it may have been eerily Earth-like, an ocean world in the past, and may have been so for several billion years before converting itself into what it is today. It's even possible that during the period that Venus had liquid water, that it may also have had active plate tectonics just like Earth. This early Venus begins to look just like the sort of place where life might arise. But then the planet changed, the oceans evaporated, and all became inhospitable. Or did it? As our studies of Venus progressed, it became clear that while the surface is a pressure cooker, a certain layer in the atmosphere around 50 kilometers up is still surprisingly clement. In fact, it's the closest environment in terms of temperature and pressure to Earth in the solar system, even to the point that if you were there and you tore your spacesuit, it would not be immediately fatal. And we know Earth's atmosphere is an abode of life, so the question is, could any life on Venus have adapted to survive in its atmosphere? And that's where the mysteries begin. The first mystery is a peculiarity that has to do with Venus's cloud patterns when viewed in ultraviolet. For about a century, we've known of dark streaks that appear in UV in Venus's cloud deck, and they absorb UV far more efficiently than the areas immediately around them. In fact, about 40% more UV is absorbed in these streaks. This is anomalous, and not easy to explain other than some unknown substance is responsible. More, these streaks and patches evolve and change over the course of weeks with no apparent explanation. And indeed, no chemical present in Venus's atmosphere can absorb UV like this and fit what's observed. But what it does look like, at least on its face, is something similar to what some life here on Earth does. It blooms and changes. And there are examples of life here on Earth that might be able to withstand something like the high acidity of the Venusian atmosphere. And that brings us to mystery number two. The Soviet Union's Venera missions to Venus detected odd elongated particles in the lower cloud layers of Venus. It's uncertain what these were, but they were about the size of a small bacterium. There are some ideas for how bacteria could survive the acidic environment of Venus, but one is particularly interesting. There is a type of molecule called an S8 molecule, basically a ring-shaped polymer made up of sulfur atoms. This type of molecule would be resistant to sulfuric acid and provide a kind of armor for any microbial life present in the atmosphere. Intriguingly, S8 molecules have been detected in the atmosphere of Venus. The question is, are the S8 molecules being put there by life, or are they simply there from another cause? Fast forward to today. The mystery of whether there is life on Venus has deepened very significantly, and in fact, we may be close to saying yes, it's there. For background, last year a paper was released, link below, that detailed that one possible biosignature that we might search for is phosphine gas in the atmospheres of exoplanets. A detection of this has come sooner than expected. Researchers have announced, link below, that they have detected phosphine gas in the atmosphere of Venus, right about at the level where the atmosphere is clement, and centering around the midsection of the planet, weaker at the poles. This is significant, since there is no known mechanism in nature under Venus's conditions other than microbial life, that can produce as much phosphine as is apparently present in Venus's atmosphere. In short, this is a case where microbial life seems strong. Should this finding be confirmed, this actually takes a step further than merely hinting that life might be present, but rather gets into a chemical that we know very well here on Earth and use industrially. We know how phosphine works, and so far no one has come up with a way to explain the phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus without biology. It remains to be seen if anyone in the scientific community yet does come up with an alternative explanation. Only time will tell. But right now, this looks like life. So what would that life be like? It would be something like anaerobic microbes, perhaps elongated if the Venera detections were in fact these microbes, possibly armored inside shells of S8 molecules existing on the water vapor in Venus's atmosphere. 
and perhaps digesting iron compounds and maybe even using ultraviolet light for an energy source. And this is where the questions about such life get interesting. The first question would be, are these microbes not really indigenous to Venus, but rather represent contamination from Earth through panspermia? In other words, did Earth sneeze on Venus? It's possible, but if this is the case, then it would be a colony of Earth life rather than anything that could be called truly alien. This would be interesting, since whenever we found a Mars colony, we would not be able to claim to be the first life from Earth to colonize another planet. Another option is that it really is alien, and represents a genesis of life entirely separate from Earth. This has huge ramifications, because it would show that life arose not just on one world in the solar system, but at least two, suggesting that however abiogenesis occurs, it happens a lot and is pretty straightforward. If this is the case, then the universe at large very likely teems with microbial life. A third option is a little spooky. If the Venus life is found to be related to us, but bears certain features in its genetics that suggest it's an earlier precursor to life on Earth, then it could be that Venus seeded Earth with life through a meteorite impact. That option would mean that we are not from here. Rather, all life on Earth got its start on Venus. This is also a possibility for Mars. Earth could no longer be considered our home world, but rather a colony. So there you have it, in the course of a single day, Venus has overshot all other candidate bodies in the solar system for life, and now sits at the top of the heap, even above Mars and Europa. But it's worth noting that conditional life existing at a world that seems so inhospitable to the very idea of life opens many doors for life in the universe at large. If this is indeed microbial life unrelated to life on Earth, then our universe very well may teem with microbial life, and it could be ubiquitous, existing almost anywhere it can. The question remains, however, how often does simple life become complex life? How often does intelligence arise? Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently checking to see if Mars is okay. It too hints of the activities of past and present life. But it's never been nailed down, though it did seem to be the likely place we'd first find evidence of life separate from Earth. Then, Venus came along and stole its thunder. And to make matters worse, Venus is brighter in the night sky than Mars. I sense tension, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer, and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live. There's also a related video on Event Horizon. Link in the description below.